Welcome to Rack Madness Day One. My name is Wade Free. I'm the Assistant Director of the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife. And like many of you, I have uh, an addiction to antlers. All things antlers. Antler hunting, shed antler hunting, measuring antlers, taxidermy, you name it. Anyway, so you probably know what I'm talking about when I say there's nothing probably more impressive, exciting, and addictive than antler. It's kind of weird. Someone asked me one time, what's so addictive about it or what's so cool about it? And the answer is, if you have to ask, you won't know, understand my answer. So what we're going to do here is uh, walk you through measuring a typical whitetail today. Tomorrow will be a non-typical. So uh, unlike last year with our rack madness, COVID has changed things up for us and taken a lot of the madness out of it. But one change we have made is we're going to actually do one virtual here and we'll be a little more detailed uh, and actually show you, you know, down in the weeds, uh, scoring techniques on how to measure your own antlers. So we're going to start with a typical. Uh, Cy Curtis is the state record uh, book uh, named after a former biologist that was responsible for bringing deer back to Oklahoma. Uh, Cy Curtis uses the Boone and Crockett measuring system that most people are familiar with, but it's about mass, tine length, and symmetry. Uh, so it's basically um, measuring the tines, taking circumferences, looking at abnormal points, inside spread, but um, if a deer grows it, you measure it, and then I'll talk you through each step, and we'll kind of go from there. I do want to cover a couple tools uh, that you'll need and I don't know if you're following along or you're just kind of watching, but if you're following along, you know, I know I'm talking to some folks that may not have ever measured antlers and some of you may be quite experienced at it. So uh, the key and primary tools if you're measuring antlers is a flexible cable. Uh, I use this for uh, the main beam and it's uh, something you can get even through Boone and Crockett if you need one. So a flexible cable, a quarter inch flexible tape for taking measurements and circumferences. You can see that one's had some use. It's, it's actually twisted into a circumference. So, so your tape and then a carpenter's rule. Uh, you need one of these, you can get them at a hardware store, but it really, the key here is for inside spreads and greatest spread, it's got the slide on it. So you need that carpenter's rule. And then for some measurements, you'll need a level with a clamp. And we use these for getting the outside or greatest spread. And like I said, I'm going to talk you through each one of these steps. I'll try to go slow enough that you can pick up and actually learn how to do it, but fast enough that I don't bore you to death. Uh, if you're bored, you probably really don't like antlers that much. But we've also got a pile of old antlers here that I've picked up that just part of that man who can't enjoy appreciate and be excited about antler it's just cool stuff sounds kind of weird but i know for you folks that are watching it's not weird it's it's awesome stuff okay so the first thing i do on a typical deer is well any deer is i look at it and i try to determine exactly what it is so is it typical is it non-typical? And we'll kind of get into that because I get a lot of questions. How do you know if you're going to measure typical or non-typical? But in this case, this is a typical five by five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. But it does have two abnormals on it. So on a typical net score, you measure the main frame 10, and these will actually be deductions. Uh, all abnormals on a typical score are deducts. Also, symmetry is an issue. Uh, let's just take these G1s. Uh, you can see that this one is quite a bit longer than this one. So you'll get credit for the length of both. But since it's all about symmetry, there'll be dedu a deduction for the difference in those two tines in the difference column. So at the end of the day, you'll end up with uh, a net score. Some people say, I just do gross, and that's fine. Uh, a lot of people just want to know if the deer grew that antler, what the gross is. 
they don't deduct for abnormals and they're not worried about symmetry. They just want to know inches and mass and a total uh, gross score. Okay, so we have determined that this is a mainframe, typical, and what I've done to speed up the process here is put some masking tape along the baselines of each point. So if you take your rack to a, an official measure, and we have measures scattered all across the state, both Cy Curtis and Boone and Crockett, uh, you can go to our website and get a list of those, but if you bring somebody in and they actually measure your deer for you, they will put tape on it because they don't want to mark up your antlers. Now, if you want to draw your baselines and put a pencil mark on your tine, you're, that's fine. But Boone and Crockett recommends we put tape on there so we're not messing with your antlers. So uh, we have uh, game wardens in every county, biologists, uh, technicians and numerous others that are qualified to be site curse measures and we also have been the Crockett measures so uh, if you don't find somebody near you on the website you can get a hold of your local game warden and they'll put you in touch so the idea here is to show you enough about measuring that you could do it yourself and then you would know to take it and get it officially scored for site Curtis or uh, maybe Boone and Crockett so uh, we want to get you to where you can even, uh, you know, bring your deer into camp and put a tape to it, and you'll have a pretty good idea of what it scores. If you watch a lot of these hunting shows, you know, the guys are always saying, oh, yeah, that's a 150 or it's a 170, and a lot of times they really inflate the score, but this is a cool way for you to know when you get back to camp or to your house or you're ready to take it to your taxidermist what your deer actually measures. So let's kick this thing off. Uh, so we're going to try to... Uh, make these measurements and kind of show you in case you have a score sheet uh, where on the score sheet you log these measurements. So if you look here the first thing uh, the score sheet talks about is number of points on each antler. So you actually would put the abnormals in here so it's going to be uh, five on the left and then we had two abnormals so five uh, plus the two so it's a seven by five so that's easy. Uh, tip to tip spread so tip to tip, actually, does, it does not factor into the score. It's really just a reference measurement. And why a reference measurement? Well, if something seems to be a little off on greatest spread or length of main beams or even tine length, you can look at tip to tip and think, whoa, that's not adding up. So the way that's done is with the sliding rule, and I'll turn this around, tip to tip, and I put the slide out to the dead center. And that gives me a nine and an eight. So tip to tip is, yeah, nine. Let me get one more double on that one. I think it's actually two. Yeah, nine and two. So nine and two. Again, that's a measurement that's required, but it doesn't add into the score into the score. Okay, then the next one is greatest spread. It also does not factor in to the score, but it's a reference measurement. You have to take that uh, up against the wall, show you how to do that. So you put your rack up against a wall and you use a level. Um, we're gonna have to move this over. Okay, I think that's going to get in our way. Let me turn that maybe. Nope. Nope. I'm going to turn it. Okay, let's turn it this way. Okay, here we go. So, what I've done here, this is greatest spread. And you put your level in there at the widest point and move your level where it is level. And then you run your ruler. So it is 20 and 5 eighths. So eighths, I need to mention that. Everything's done in eighths of an inch. So 20 and 5 eighths, greatest spread.
Okay, so we're back to 20 and 5 eighths. Okay, inside spread of main beam. That is taken parallel to the length of the skull and perpendicular. So again, this is where your slide rule comes in. And this inside main beam, uh, inside spread is taken from the center of the main beam. So it will be right in here. So again, with your slide, center of main beam, let me turn that around so you can actually see it. All right, so center at the widest point, actually. So we've got uh, 18 and 2 eighths. So it's all square, perpendicular, uh, and level. You don't want a measurement up like this. If you'd have a main beam that was higher than the other side and you had a funky angle, you'd have to put a level in there and do the measurement that way. So you've got to keep your ruler level. So there we go, 18 and 2 eighths. Inside spread. Oh, that goes right here. Inside spread of main beam, 18 and 2 eighths. Another key is you'll see in this score sheet, uh, credit may equal but not exceed the longer beam length. So we don't have any problem there. It's going to be 20 plus inches on the main beam. So that spread credit uh, is going to be 18 and 2. So 18 and 2 eighths. Okay. The next one is total length of abnormal points. So the reason these are taped is so when I measure those, I pull the tape off and then you don't miss them. You've seen maybe at previous rack madness uh, events or even elsewhere, some of these, uh, some of the non-typical bucks really get funky and they'll have 20, 30, 40 abnormals. And the only way you can keep track of where you are in the measurement sequence is to have them taped and then remove the tape. So this is our first. Uh, if you've got brow points uh, between the burr and the main uh, G1, it's they're always abnormal. So they will always be an abnormal point. Deducted on a typical or added in on a non-typical. So I've got my little baseline there. You probably can't see it, but I'll get my tape on it. There we go. That one ended up being too even on the right side. So too even, I just put a mark there. So this guy, you wanna measure, uh, when you take antler measurements, you always wanna measure on the curve. So I'm gonna show you another baseline measurement here. But So when you're drawing a baseline, you do not want to give the tine length too much credit, but you don't wanna cheat the tine. So what you're doing is really following the contour of the tine, or in most cases, the main beam. And you use that, uh, do that by putting your tape on there. Okay, so you could see that would be way too high, and down in here would be way too low because you're cutting out some of that. So I, you lay that tape in there and kind of go on the curve of what's already existing in the tine. So that would be the base. And then you lay that tape in there. And you got one and three. Okay. All right, so we've got the two abnormals taken and entered in the abnormal points block up there. All right, so now we're on to the mainframe. So it's a 10. What I usually do, I'm in a habit. I'll start with main beams and then I'll do the tines, but you can just follow the score sheet and we'll do that today just to stay with it. But So the F measurement is length of main beam. So you do that with your cable. And for you measurers that are watching, or those of you that have measured a lot of these, this main beam length is where most error occurs 
And it's always when you do the wrap around. You can cut it off by a couple eighths or you can gain a couple eighths, but I like to take this measurement a couple times, but you basically lay your cable in, hook it. It would be center of the antler behind what would be the eye orbit. So be like right in there. Okay. So now the part where you, so you wouldn't want to wrap it too far back behind. So if you can get your camera in there, if you go too far behind, you're really inflating your score. So you pull it back down and start bending it right down the center of the main beam. So, and center really, if you see, that's a good thing if you've got your base lines drawn here to the bottom, it helps you follow center. And I'm doing this by myself, so it's a little tricky. A lot of times you'll have a helper and uh, they'll help you hold that cable. You can actually tape it on there, but I'll see if I can get it on there without messing up too much. So press firmly. Okay. And then you take your clip. That was the other thing I didn't cover. You need a little clip for your cable and snap it on there. So now I've got left side main beam link. So he's going to be 20, 22 and 4 eighths on the left side. All right. So link the main beam, go to line F, link the main beam, left antler, and it's, it's recorded. Now flip it over, same thing on the right. Again, this is the toughest, really, measurement to be completely accurate, and that all revolves around that wrap. So you can see the center headed right into what would be the orbit. So I lay that right in there, hold it down, and I start that wrap. The reason you use a flexible cable is when you do the bends, it lays in there and you're not really twisting that uh, tape measure around, and this is much more accurate. So pretty close to the left side. So this is where your helper clips that on. You're a lot more accurate with it. So that one's going to be 22 and 7 eighths. So we have a 22 and 7 eighths and 22 and 4 eighths. Good, good main beams. Uh, you know, 20 plus is good. You know, you get up over 25 to 27, and those are like huge, I mean, massive main beams, 27, 28. But a 22, 23 is good main beam length. Uh, so we've got that part. So main beams are measured both left and right. I'm going to go on down on the score sheet to the G1s or brow tines, uh, eye guards, whatever you call them, uh, G1s. Uh, I call them tines, so we're going to go G1 on the left. So you can see here, I have pre-drawn the baseline, and I'll show you again kind of how you do that. You can see the mark there. You don't want to get it too low, and you don't want to get it too high, so it lays in about right there on that spot. And then I lay my tape in there. Again, you always measure on the curve. So we've got, see what that was there. Yeah, six and, six and four eighths. So 
a six and four eighth brow tine is that's pretty impressive. So on the left, six and four eighths, uh, G one, six and four. So now we go. I'm just going to go side to side. I'll tell you what, just for ease, let's go down that column. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We've got. Uh, we're. I'm just going to work down the left side. It's a lot easier. Uh, so we've got G one. Now we're going to go to G two. So. I already drawn that baseline, showed you where you need to draw the baseline. So you stick your tape on there. And if you're gonna do this a lot, you do need to get one of these measuring tapes that has this blank spot with the hook in ring. So hit it on there and go down the outside on the curve. And that one is 11 and seven. Okay, 11, seven. That's actually measuring six right there. Okay, 11, six. And you go right to the tip. Okay, 11, six. Now we're going to, okay, we got G1, G2, G3. So we're going right there. Baseline's already drawn. Yep, I moved it. Okay, there we go. Nine and two. Nine and two eighths. Okay, so now I'm going to G3. So one, two, three. Let's see, we've got two. No, nope, I've got that backwards. We're gonna move that one down. Six and four. And Eleven and six. Okay. Pencil error there. Okay. Now let's go to one, two, three, four. So this is kind of funky uh, because you're measuring here and then you got to kind of go around that curve. So I just take that, make a mark right there, and then I rotate it. Camera was getting in my way. There's two. Okay, three and five. So three and five eighths. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to double check those because I think I got out of sequence. Check this one. Should be 11 and 7. Yep. Then we should have a 9 and 2. Got it. And then a 3 and 5. Okay, so we're good there. All right, so now let's go to the H's. So 
H's on the score sheet are your circumferences. So there'll be four of them. And it is the circumference on H1, the first one between the burr and the G1 at the smallest location. So you can see how you can work this tape around. There's a almost four and six. Oop, there it is. So if you're not careful, you can be a little off, but you sometimes you can work it between those burrs and it'll go to the Okay, it's a little less there, but given the rack the benefit, it's going to be four and six. So that's going right here on the score sheet. Uh, four and six. Okay, so just so you can keep order here, on the left side that we've been working on, we've got 22 and four on the main beam, and then the Length of the first point, six and four, 11, seven, nine and two, and three and five. All in eights, four eights, uh, seven eights, two eights, and five eights. So now we're gonna go to H2. Same thing. Smallest place. We're going to have to go with four and one on that one. Four and one eighth. It was, man, it was just a fraction off, but. Okay, then three will be right in here. So we got H1, H2. This is going to be H3. Anybody want to guess? There it is. Four and two. Okay. Four and two. And we'll grab that last one. So we're up here and we're going to pull it back and just see. There it is, three and four. Three and four eighths. Okay, so that was the left side. It's easier than it sounded. Length of the main beam. We got the G1, two, threes, and four. We got H1, two, three, four. Uh, we've already done inside spread, and we've done tip to tip and greatest spread. So we'll move to the left side. On the left side, we've already knocked out these two abnormals. So I'm gonna start with the G1. Already drawn that baseline. You kind of see how that lays in there. Baselines are sometimes tough. So I'll just show that one again. You don't wanna, you don't wanna go too high because that cheats your time length and you don't wanna go too low because you're actually exaggerating. So. You lay the tape along the main beam on the natural curve. Right there. So that is laid in there. And again, you go around the curve. And a little, well, it's right between eight and four, so. All right, so that's pretty close. It's kind of split in the eight, so I'm gonna do it one more time. So if you get an official measure to measure your antlers, they're very detailed and intricate. And also know that the rat gets the benefit of the doubt on, see there it is, so I'm not gonna have to go four on that one. Okay, eight and four.
And we have a lot of measures across the state with a lot of years. It would be interesting to know just how many measuring years of experience we have total. It's, it's hundreds of years. Okay, so that's G1. G2, if you look at the rack, which one does it look like the G2 is longer or shorter? It looks to be shorter, but we'll guess. And my tape came off, so we'll go ahead and remeasure, re draw that baseline. Okay, so 11 and 2. So not much shorter. The other one was 11.7, but just enough that you could see it. So if you look at it again, I mean, if you're trying to field judge that buck, you can't really. I mean, it takes a detailed eye. Probably not going to see it, but if you got it in your hand, you can kind of tell that it's shorter. Okay, so now we're going to go to... G3, there's one, two, three. Baseline's drawn, let me stick a tape on there. Nine and six eighths. And then we're going to the last G on the right. four and seven eighths. So again, repeat just like on the left side, we're gonna go back to the H's, smallest point between the burr. So we're showing about a five there, get up here, it's another five. It looks like it's probably going to be Yep, five inches. Actually, right on the money. So I'm going in here with five. H2. Okay, so there I'm looking about four and two, but there's four and one. So four and one eighth on H2. Now we'll go to three. Not much moving there, so four. Four and zero eights. And then the last one, so you've got H one, two, three, four. Three. Three and three. Okay, so what we do here is you bring down your abnormal points. We have to do differences. So what we've got on this score sheet is some differences, but we'll recap. We got main beam lengths, both sides, uh, G1, 2, 3, 4, both sides. We've got the abnormals recorded. We've got the circumferences, inside spread, greater spread, tip to tip. And if we want to look at this score sheet real quick, we've got it knocked out. So we have 18 and 2 eighths inside spread. And I don't know, but there's probably several people that are watching that can probably guess the score on this. So if y'all want to just pitch in, uh, figure out what that thing might score.
but you know he's 18 and something inside. He's got 20 two plus main beams and he's got some G2s in the 10 to 11. If you had him out there at 100 yards, what would you call him? And you also know that sometimes the best buck's angle is from behind. I don't know what it is, but when they're looking back at, they're looking away from you, they look humongous. But if anybody wants to guess, let us know what you think it is. I'll go ahead and I've got this score sheet here. We've got one tallied up already, so I do want to sh uh, let them see here how we did done this. Uh, did anybody guess what that score was? I'm going to put a piece of tape for that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, here's what it looks like if you've got a score sheet. We had all the abnormals, and it came up uh, three and two-eighths inches of abnormals. So, it's typical. It's, it will be a deduct, and it goes right here. And then the differences, you can see where the differences on the main beam, you had 22 and 7 and 22 and 4. Three eighths of difference, not much. Um, the G ones kind of hurt. Uh, there was a difference of two inches, and then you can see the running differences between the measurements. So that's symmetry. This is adding in all the point links, and then this column is adding up the differences in symmetry between left and right, right, left, right, left. Okay. So this buck, with the abnormals of three and two added into that column, had eight and five eighths inches of abnormal. Well, the cool thing about him is he grossed here uh, 73 and six eighths and 70 and three eighths. So that adds in. So you go to your total column, 18 and two eighths for your inside spread, 73 and six eighths for the right antler and 70 and three eighths for the left antler. So, he subbed 162 and 3 eighths. That's a heck of a buck. But by the time you take off the eight and five, some of that symmetry difference, it put him at 153 and 7 eighths. So he is a Cy Curtis buck at 153. But the cool thing about him is he grossed at 162 uh, before the D-dubs. So, a Cy buck, 153 and 7 eighths, so he's definitely a keeper. And you hear a lot of people talking about, yeah, they're only going to shoot a Boone and Crockett deer, but I guarantee you, a 150 buck or bigger, you know, 150 buck, 160, it's about as big as they get. There aren't as many Boone and Crockett's hiding under every tree like everybody thinks. Uh, Actually, it's very few compared to the number of deer we've killed. And speaking of deer we've killed, you know, we set a record this year of over 120,000 plus whitetails killed. Who would have thought that uh, ever? So a new record on harvest. I think we're pushing like 125K. And then the quality of bucks that keep coming in, uh, not only to the wildlife department, but a lot of our field measures is just impressive. Uh, Oklahoma has been touted as you know one of the top five six deer states and there were probably people logged on today that remember when you didn't see that many deer but white-tailed deer are flourishing not only in number but size uh, it's a testament to ODWC and the work they do and you all as hunters enjoy and tomorrow we'll be doing a non-typical thank you thank you thank uh, you Tune back in tomorrow and we'll go on a non-typical uh, measuring uh, session.